Good morning. Another day, another solution set. So today I'll be dealing with paper one of the patent decision examination held in 2013. So coming straight to the questions, part A has further subpart part A1, which has 15 multiple choice questions. So question one requires you to specify the time period within which the statement and undertaking on form three is required to be filed. And this is provided under section 8.1 rule 12.1a. The correct answer is option A. I've already made a detailed video on provision of section 8 and you could refer to it if you want to know more details about how section 8.1 or 8.2 operates. Question 2 relates to section 16.1 which is about divisional applications and a divisional application can be filed anytime before grant of patent on the first mentioned application or the parent application from which you are deriving the divisional application and thus part C is the correct answer. For answering question 3 you need to refer to section 104. And it provides that the lowest court where a suit for infringement could be filed is the district court. In the question, you have provided both the options, which is district court as well as the higher court, which lies above the district court. And you can file a suit for infringement of patent before either of the courts, depending on the value of the damages that you are claiming. So every court has a pecuniary jurisdiction and which is like a threshold value. So if the value of damages that are claimed is less than the threshold value, the suit would be filed before the district court. Otherwise, it would be filed before the high court. So both A and B are the true answers and thus the correct option would be D. For answering question 4, you need to refer to section 9D which relates to the terms and conditions of compulsory license. Based on a perusal of the said section, you will find out that none of the options that are given are there in section 90 and thus the correct option is D. The closest option is option C. However, as per the section, the patented invention is required to be worked to the fullest extent and not to the reasonable extent and that is what the controller needs to ensure. So, in my opinion, none of the above is the correct answer which is option D. In respect of question 5, we could refer to section 11a which provides that the application is not open to the public for a period of at least 18 months and thus anything which is unpublished is not in the public domain and thus no one can obtain details of that particular unpublished patent application and thus the correct answer should be D which is none of the above. The other logic is that since the patent application has not been published so it is not possible for anyone who's, who does not know about the patent application to request for information from the patent office. For answering question 6 you could refer to section 26 which provides that if a patent has been revoked on the grounds of wrongful obtaining from the true and first inventor the controller could upon request being made by the person who had filed for the opposition could direct that the patent shall stand amended in the name of the person who has opposed the patent application on this particular ground. For answering question 7, the grounds for filing an appeal are provided under section 117a subsection 2 and out of all the given options, option D is the correct option because an application that has been deemed to be abandoned under section 21 cannot be appealed for as is provided under section 117a subsection 2. You need to note here that the IPAP does not exist now and any appeal lies before the High Court. Question 8 refers to the grounds for filing a pre-grant opposition and this is provided under section 25.1. Out of the given option, option D is correct and it relates to the traditional knowledge or knowledge of an indigenous community in India or outside which is provided under section 25.1 subsection K. For answering question 9, you could refer to section 77.1b which provides that the controller has the powers of civil court to the extent that he could require discovery and production of any document. All other options that are given are not the correct option. For answering question 10, you need to refer to section 54 subsection 4 and it provides that a patent of addition cannot be granted before the grant of patent for the main invention. Now question 11 is a trick question. There is no definition for inventor as such which is provided under the act. So when no definition has been provided, you could refer to the ordinary dictionary meaning and I have referred to the Black's Law Dictionary which provides that an inventor is, is someone who contrives some new thing. In all the, all the other options, both Ramesh and Suresh have worked towards making an invention. However, in option B, Ramesh has only financed the work of Suresh and this does not qualify for being qualified as an inventor. Thus, in my opinion, option B should be the correct option. For answering question 12, you need to refer to section 25.1 and 
section 25 2 you cannot file an opposition against an invention that was being secretly used in india because because an invention which was being secretly used is not in the public domain to answer question 13 let us first see what section 10 subsection 4 provides it provides the requirements for a complete specification it includes that it should have a claim it should have an abstract there's no such requirement for a provisional patent specification as specified in the patents act and thus description of the invention is the least minimum thing that is required for a provisional patent application because it is where you are defining your innovation for the first time and thus description is the most important part all other aspects you could have or you may not have it's it's your choice you could still have claims in the provisional patent application but it is not necessary thus the correct option is a and all other b c d are optional aspects of a provisional application since the question asks you to specify what the provisional patent specification must contain the correct answer is a for question 14 refer to rule 71 2 of the patents rules and it provides that whenever you file an application requesting for a foreign filing permission it has to be acceded to by the controller within 21 days of filing of the request and thus option b is the correct option for answering question 15 refer to section 25 subsection 2 and a post grant opposition could be filed before the expiry of a period of 12 months from the date of publication under section 43 part a2 has 10 true and false questions for question 1 refer to section 66 any revocation of a patent on the grounds of being mischievous to the state or prejudicial to the public is done by the central government by giving a notice in the official gazette and thus the statement in question number one is false for question number two please note that a provisional specification is never published and thus irrespective of whether or not you have filed a request for early publication the provisional application would never be published and thus the correct answer is false for question three refer to section 10 subsection 4 again it is desirable to mention the closest prior art in the background section of a patent specification but it is not mandatory and thus the statement is false for question 4, refer to section 69 which provides for registration of assignments. In the provision, there is no time limit specified for the registration process as such. And thus, the statement given herein is false. The only requirement for an assignment is that it should be in writing and this is provided under section 68. For question 5, refer to section 109 which provides for the rights of exclusive licensee to take proceedings against infringement as per which the provided statement is true and exclusive licensee can file infringement suit just like a patentee. The patentee could be added as a defendant in such a suit in case he is not ready to be listed as a plaintiff in the suit. For answering section 6, refer to section 107A subsection A and this basically relates to submission of information for the purpose of getting regulatory approvals and this is allowed and not considered as infringement and thus the statement given is true. For answering question 7, refer to section 10, subsection 3. In case you submit a model or sample of any product, then it does not form part of the specification. And thus, the statement is false. For question 8, refer to section 64, subsection 1, which provides that a patent could be revoked by the High Court on a petition by any person interested or in the case of a counterclaim. It doesn't happen before the district court. Question 9, the statement given is true and this is provided under section 37, subsection 1a. Again, question 10 is a trick question. The, you would not find any details of, of this in the Patents Act. You need to refer to article 4c, sub article 4 of the Paris Convention which provides for how and when you can claim a priority of a previously filed application and in case the previously filed application has been withdrawn in the convention country before the date of filing of the corresponding application for which you are filing in India, then you cannot claim priority of that withdrawn application and this is what is provided under article 4c sub article 4. Thus, this statement is true. So, now part B has eight questions out of which you need to answer six and these are detailed questions so in your answer you should first mention the facts related to the question and then refer to the relevant provisions and then finally you should bring out how this particular provision relates to the facts of the situation and then based on that you give an advice so for question one the facts are that the inventor has already disclosed the innovation in a paper in a conference and now he wants to procure patent protection so now here the relevant provision for this is section 31 subsection d 
and it basically relates to the exceptions to the rule of anticipation. So basically what it provides is that an invention disclosed in a paper read before a learned society would not be considered to be anticipating a later filed patent application based on the same innovation by the same person provided that the patent application has been filed within 12 months from the date of disclosure or publication of the paper in the conference. So the basic advice to the inventor would be that he needs to file the patent application within 12 months of disclosure in the paper in the for question 2 you need to refer to section 92 wherein one complete specification could be derived from provisional applications which relate to innovations which are cognate to each other or maybe one is modification of the other you may have two different provisional applications but the inventions are related to each other and you could derive one complete specification out of the two provisional specifications so here there is a provisional application a and after three months there is another provisional application b both the inventions are related to each other and are by the same applicant and the applicant is desirous of filing one complete specification based on the two so now you can advise the applicant based on section 9 subsection 2 also you should read proviso of the of the set section where, which provides that the priority date of the complete specification when it is derived from the two provisional applications would be the earliest provisional application for question 3 you need to refer to section 107a subsection b and it basically relates to exhaustion of patent right so it provides that if a patented product has been imported by some other person and he imports it from a person who is authorized by the law to produce or sell or distribute the patented product then such importation would not qualify as an infringement this is also called the first sale doctrine wherein once the patentee has sold the product thereafter he does not hold any rights on that particular product and thus any subsequent sale of that particular patented product would not qualify as an infringement and this is what is happening here as well so salim has already authorized bharat to sell the patented tool in us and julie is buying the tool from bharat in us who and thereafter julie imports that particular product into india so this falls under section 107a subsection b and thus julie would not be liable for infringement in india so question 4 basically relates to the rights of co-patentees in any patent so section 50 subsection 1 provides that unless there is a contract to the contrary all patentees would have equal share in the patent so what is given here is that there are two patentees and one of the patentee has licensed the patent to some company without informing the other co-patentee so the other co-patentee has rights under section 50 subsection 3 which provides that any license cannot be granted without seeking permission of the co-patentee. Now, since the license has already been given, the co-patentee could protect her rights under Section 51 of, of the Patents Act by making an application to the control of patents under Section 51, subsection 1. So, by filing the request, the co-patentee could ask for a share in the license fee or maybe also ask for the controller to give directions to revoke the license that has been granted the controller can thus pass instructions to dr pratibha to protect the rights of leelavati the controller passes necessary directions and in case dr pratibha does not follow those leelavati would have remedies under section 51 subsection 2 and subsection 3 wherein the controller may appoint some other person to execute the directions of the controller under question 5 you need to explain the entire process of examination and you could refer to section 15 and section 21 of the patents act to specify what are the applicable time limits and what are the type of objections that are received and how you could answer those here you must also mention about the option of official hearing and you could also mention about the amendments that could be made to the claims to meet the objection of the controller and that such amendments should not go beyond the scope of the original complete specification and in particular the subject matter that has been described therein Additionally, you could mention about section 16 in case there is an objection regarding plurality of distinct inventions. Question 6 is pretty straightforward. It requires you to provide the grounds based on which a compulsory license could be granted and this is provided under section 8401. Also, the factors that the controller is required to take into account while considering the compulsory application application are provided under section 84 subsection 6. Question 7 in particular relates to the use of invention by the central government for the purpose of the government and this is provided under section 100 
and basically it provides that any invention could be used by the central government or by any person authorized by the government for using the invention for the purpose of the government. Section 100 subsection 3 provides that an appropriate compensation is also provided to the patentee which is based on mutual determination based on agreement with the patentee or determined by the high court and this is applicable only after a patent has been granted on the invention. Section 100 subsection 4 provides that the authorization could be granted before or after grant of patent on the invention and, and also before or after use of the invention. So, the government may give the authorization even before it is used. Section 100 subsection 5 provides that the patentee needs to be notified of the extent of use of the innovation by the central government or the person authorized by the central government. You could also refer to section 103 wherein the high court may settle any disputes as regards the use of the invention for the purpose of the government. For answering question 8, you need to refer to section 140 which provides for these certain restrictive conditions that need to be avoided while making a contract. One needs to avoid all these conditions that are provided under section 140 and in the event any such conditions have been included, these conditions are considered to be void ab initio, meaning these are considered as restrictive and can, cannot be put into force from the very beginning. So, this is one of the consequences. The other consequences is that in case there is a suit for infringement filed against a person who has been made to sign such a contract by the patentee, he could prove that these are the restrictive conditions that have been included in the contract and these are unlawful and this would be available to him as a defense against a suit for infringement. Also, in such a suit for infringement, the, the provisions of section 140 would not apply if the plaintiff or the patent is able to prove that he was not party to the contract and he proves to the satisfaction of the court that the conditions were included in the contract without his knowledge and consent. So, this is all about the solution set for the paper 1 of 2013. In case you do not agree with any of the solutions, you could provide your views regarding the same in the comments box and I'll be happy to discuss those. If there are any other suggestions, please do drop them in the comments box. Thank you very much.